Alright guys, this is Slavical from Misguided Games. Sorry about that. My mic has been turned off this entire time. My apologies. So, let me start from the very beginning. <laughs> um... Today's live stream is going to focus on making items. So this is going to consist of making a, a data asset and then an item actor class. So we're going to be making two classes for an item. So. Uh, the whole purpose of that is that the uh, data asset is going to contain all of the data for that item. So it's going to contain like the item's name, a description, an icon that you'll see in the um, inventory uh, menu. It will also uh, be used by the asset manager to uh, asynchron asynchron to asynchronously, I don't even think that's a word, I think I just made up a word, to load asynchronously. That was the word I was looking for, to asynchronously load items into the world. And then once those items are loaded, the item actor class associated to that item will be spawned, and then the item will be visually represented within the world and using the asset manager is cool for this because then we can pick and choose when we want to load the um, um, the item into the world so that's going to be the scope for today and what I wanted to showcase what I was showcasing earlier is the uh, menu system that I've been working on for the game. Pretty proud of it. I took some textures from the pro main menu asset that's off the marketplace. Um, so I have some like hover effects going on here. You can quit the game. Options doesn't do anything yet. New game brings up this and then menu you can resume the game quit game brings up this then you can go back go back to the main menu and then quit the game so I'm going to be playing with that um, to make the menu more aesthetically pleasing so with that let's go ahead and start making these item classes so I want to inherit the item data class from primary data asset and we'll call this sci-fi item and we'll put this in the items folder I'm also drinking a cookie and cream milkshake from Chick-fil-A. Do, 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 do. Waiting for these classes. All right, cool. So we got one class. Now let's make our second class. This one will inherit from actor. 
sci-fi item actor. Oh, it is Friday. Finished work like five minutes before I had to start the stream. But work is done. Now it's time to program. All right. Don't need the instance. Do need the item actor. Don't need any of this for right now. Don't need that, although we will include, and this is something I do for all of the base classes, we'll include sci-fi types. So then that way all of the structs and enums I create will be available for this class. Doing some setup here, making everything all nice. I don't think this one has a constructor. It does not. Which one has a constructor? The character does. We're also going to make this class abstract and not blue printable, which means that when we make child classes of this, we'll have to make it blue printable. And let's go ahead and put the comment here. So the only thing I want to do in here as of right now is add a skeletal mesh to this. So doesn't this already have one? Nope. I'm trying to think. Visible anywhere, blueprint, read only, category, uh, components, and then we have to add a meta, which is, oh, I forget what it's called. Uh, new property meta specifiers. Do I have Nope. I think it's allow private access. Yep. This is what I want. And so what this essentially does is it allows variables that have a u property, u property variables that are in a private scope. So by default, a generated body will create a private scope. This constructor, for example, is in a public scope. So anything in a private scope can still be used in blueprints. Class, you 
skeletal mesh. We'll call this item mesh. Now, all I want to do is create that item mesh. And then I need to, uh, what did I call it? I didn't use it here. I use it in the player, I think. Yeah, project includes and engine includes. Oh, look at that. And then I want to set this, or sorry, I want to do root component equals item mesh. And I think that's all I want to do for right now. Let's add a comment. represents this item within the world. All right. So now with the actual item data class. I guess you're, I should also give this class a comment too, huh? Uh, what do I usually use? Nope. Use something like this. It's a type of actor that acts as the base item actor class for this game for visually representing this I an associated item within the world. Exposes functions that allow. Well, I haven't gotten there yet, so I'll just leave it there for right now. Here I can do the same thing. And I think the way Action RPG does their, mm, their items. Yeah, abstract and blueprint type. I want this to sci-fi types dot h. Okay. So now this is where we will add stuff like the item's name. So the name, or this item's name, new property, edit defaults only, category equals 
item config. <clears throat> F text. Item name. think this one meta equals multi-line equals true I think is what I want to do let me check that real quick so you Property meta specifiers. I want to see if it was multi line. Okay. Okay. So I believe that would be fine. And we'll call this the item description. Description. This item. This will show in the inventory menu items name this will show in the inventory menu and then for now actor visually representing this item within the world go T Ooh, gotta make that a U property first edit defaults only category equals item config T subclass class of a sci-fi item actor and we'll call this item actor uh, for setting in items data g item name description and abilities this is loaded a synchronously i cannot spell by the side we have to make this mm, 
Okay. So let's build all this. Let's see what we got so far. Do do. Cool. So let's see what we got so far. Mm. So I do need to get some items in here. I think it's called white silver. Yeah. Can't remember if I've already added these or not. Let me check. Ah. I love cooking cream milkshakes from Chick-fil-A. I have not. So let's add that to the assets. Migrate some stuff over. I think all I want for now is that and the pistol. Okay. Mm okay. Um, let's go back here, and while I'm at it, I'm also going to go ahead and just migrate these over. So these are being so far, I think these are just going to be widgets, so there's no need to have blueprint folder in there delete 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 and then the this styles folder will have all the stuff that I need because this is what I use to uh, make certain stuff so like this I, I button actually inherits I don't know if you guys knew this or not you go to blueprint class and you can type in button. So you see I have my BP sci-fi button. 
you can open it up and then you can change a whole bunch of stuff and then in your widget blueprints you can call those blueprints that you made it's pretty cool if you want to make like custom text like if you're going to use like one font throughout your entire game and instead of just using the text and then changing the font you can make a blueprint of a text and then change all your stuff and then in all your widgets use that custom text blueprint that you made and then you can just change that blueprint whatever you want and it just propagate through all of your widgets so that's kind of what I've been doing off stream so move those in here textures um, I'm gonna call this frame vertical frame horizontal and then just frame corner and then this is going to be background mask Go ahead and move those this textures folder. Yeah, I guess that's fine. And fix all redirectors. and then delete this then same thing with this folder I'm going to rename it call it items then we'll have weapons meshes sk underscore Assault rifle, <sighs> physics. I know some of this can get tedious and boring, but a well organized project will do wonders for you in the long run, especially have a big team it's always good to have standards set in place so then everybody knows where everything is what it should be named what it is so on and so forth so open up textures it's BC M for mask. Actually, call this zero one mask. Mm. Do it like this. Numbers last. going to call this three 
So same thing here. materials so we have this weapon master so I'm going to call this M weapon base that's a material instance so MI pistol white white and MI Okay, now we can do blueprints. Ooh. And we want to make actually, before we do all of this, we have to make our child classes because our current classes are not blueprint -able. so if I was to go and type in item actor hold on, what is it called? sci-fi item actor yeah should have came up I guess it won't come up until I make a child class so let's go ahead and do that so sci-fi item I'll call this sci-fi weapon actor. I will delete that later. <laughs> I will delete that off camera so then my computer doesn't spin forever or visual assist doesn't spin forever parsing through all of my all of Unreal Engine. I guess we should go ahead and create this as well. So instead of sci-fi item, be called sci-fi weapon. Compiling, compiling, cool. And while we're at it, let's 
go ahead and make an asset manager. All right, let's reload all of this. Let's close that, reload. So we've added lots of stuff. So I'm not going to add the sci-fi types class in here because there's no need to because the weapon actor inherits from item actor and the item actor already has the sci-fi types in its can in its uh <coughs> in its uh header file so Danny K how long did it take you to come create this project before you live streamed any of it actually the v <laughs> this whole project has been mostly created on live streams so my very first episode I went and created this project from scratch and I think my first episode is like six and a half hours long <laughs> because the initial setup and everything was a lot so yeah it's I do I would say I would do the majority of it uh, through the live streams and then I might change some stuff here or there uh, off camera like the menu for example I changed how it looked off camera just so then I can take the time to personalize it the way that I wanted to. But the logic and stuff is all done on I either record or I um, live stream it. No, no, I don't recreate it. Everything is literally live. So, um, I may like go into the project, rename some things, change some things, like once I get the item stuff up and running, I'll probably add more items to it off camera, but uh, all of the coding is usually done, I either record myself or I do it on the live stream. So, going back to the weapon actor, let's give it a note as well. I don't think there's anything. Yeah, there's nothing in there. It's a type of sci-fi item actor that acts as the base weapon actor class for this game sending a weapon within the world this class handles exposes because later it's going to do like holster and unholster 
functions and blueprints to be used when switching weapons. Oh, that's that's what I got so far. So I mentioned that this is abstract and not blueprintable. So this not blueprintable is actually an inherit inherited U class specifier. So I still want this to be abstract. Abstract is not inherited, so you have to type abstract in every class. And then I want to make this blueprintable. And then I think I want this to be a blueprint type, so then we can make it a variable in blueprints for whatever reason. Never know. And I think that's all I'm going to do in here for right now. <sighs> Gotta delete that sci fi, my sci fi weapon actor class. And then the. Yeah, sci fi weapon. Oh no, we don't want that one. Oh no. I did the same thing, didn't I? just love harassing myself with organization. So yeah, this is what I did. My sci-fi weapon actor. My sci-fi weapon. That's not what I want. just sci-fi weapon. Now I can close this, reload. Oh. Boom. So abstract blueprint type. Is that how I want it for? Let me think. Abstract blueprint type. And then I think the rest. Okay, I don't have to do I don't have to do the anything to the rest. So I can just leave this blank. No uh, class meta specif or no class specifiers. Um so we're going to Eventually, for the sci-fi weapon, we will add in some stuff that's weapon-specific. Um, so, like, one thing I plan to do for weapons is I want to create a um, a curve, <coughs> a uh, like a curve table or maybe just a table um, where you take in the weapons current level so let's say if it's level 7 
it's going to find what the base damage should be for that weapon at level 7 and we can handle all of that with the abilities so I was thinking this is further on down the line but what I was thinking about doing is um, using the weapons level to grant or when I grant the ability for the weapon it's going to use the weapons level as that abilities level so that's what I'm thinking about doing but I don't think I have anything to put in here just yet let's play with the well let's put the comment in here first fire rate um magazine size and Yeah, effects. <clears throat> okay. So let's do some stuff in our asset manager. So since this is a base class, always got to do the sci-fi types include. <clears throat> So let me look over here at RP action RPG stuff. So let me bring this over here so you guys can see it. So I kind of use action RPG as a base for uh, setting up the items and stuff in learning how to use the asset manager so the asset manager is really cool like I said earlier because you could you can asynchronously load objects into the game and it doesn't just have to be items it could be enemies and so something that I want to do is uh, use the asset manager to do like a level spawning system so you have like a leveled list of enemies and then based on the character's level use the asset manager to spawn what enemies should be there um, stuff like that that's what the asset manager can be used for at least with my current knowledge <laughs> um, but yeah the majority of what I've learned and the majority of what I'm going to be doing is all from action RPG so one thing that I have to do is look at their asset manager and something that they do is they create 
um, these asset types. These are important because you use these asset types to uh, differentiate between what kind of item you are attempting to load. Um, so what I want to do is I want to grab this and I want to use it for who was it public or private it's public and I want to use this for my list of items so I think I'm going to call this a consumable item type uh, and then just the weapon item type. We'll just have two for now. And now this is something we want to do. We want to um, <coughs> we want to create a git a getter for our asset manager so let's see This is important because when we want to do stuff using our asset manager, well, we have to have a getter. Uh, so the way they do it is they get the asset manager assigned to the engine and they cast it and then they either Yeah, they just return what they've casted. And if it fails, then it's because we don't have the right asset manager used in the engine. Which means we'll never be able to use the stuff in the asset manager. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that as well. Oh, I forgot the cast. Cool, cool. UE log. So they have their own action RPG has their own um, log that they've created. I'm just going to use log tab. Must be sci fi. Actually, yeah. Okay, cool. So 
so another thing it's an action RPG they have this <coughs> um, this force load item this is something that they use for their game instance to load the item and I think it's what they use to hmm I don't think they use it to load the store nope I can't remember where they use it where they use the force load Maybe it's in the player controller. There we go. So what function is this? Load inventory. Mm. So they're going to load uh, items listed in the in the save file okay well this is stuff we're going to get to later on in the future but we know that we'll probably most likely use this so we shall also have one Let's copy the notes to Puppy. Pretty good to just read the note too. So synchronously loads. So the difference between asynchronous and synchronous, from my understanding and you know, if, if I'm wrong, feel free to let me know. Asynchronous means it doesn't happen on the main game thread, but synchronous means it does happen on the main game thread. So similar to, oh, I think a couple episodes ago, I talked about loading screens and doing those asynchronously. You want to do that, so then the all of the 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 main game thread it just purely focuses on loading the game and then the main mid or the loading screen is going to be handled on a separate thread and it doesn't interfere with the loading process uh, for the game same thing with um, the asset manager and loading items we can load the player's inventory asynchronously while the game is starting up so then the player's inventory is already populated with its items and you don't have to wait for the items to load whenever the player starts the game so uh, this can hitch but it's useful when you cannot wait for an async load this does not maintain a reference to the item, so it will garbage collect if not loaded some other way. Okay. Then class use sci fi item. works for me call to actually we need to add a return to this turn the use sci-fi item was loaded uh, same thing with here let's add a comment call to get the Asset manager being used by this game. Return 
BU Sci Fi Asset Manager. This game uses will return an error if not or hold on. This function will return an error in and I don't know if it will crash but I know it will stop the game if a use sci-fi asset manager is not set in the default settings to I and I right I think so. Yep. getting to the bottom of my shake. Oh well. Hey, Arialic. Uh, no man, you're good. No worries, no worries. It happens. Thank you for showing up. Feel free to chill. It's Friday. You ain't got nowhere to go. Do you have a job? Maybe. Maybe not. Do you have responsibilities? Let's hope not. So just relax. Enjoy this Friday evening. At least that's what it is for me. It's a Friday evening. Enjoy this Friday evening watching me try my best to program and not crash Unreal Engine. Okay, so let's create the force load item function. Oh, and for those who are curious why I said that this getter will stop the game, it's because this error message is fatal which if I recall actually let's look it up oh so it's just going to crash let's see Well, let's find out what it does whenever I finish this function. Um, action RPG. Let's do this. Let's do sci fi item. Log temp. Cool. So for I think they have a nice.
comment up here that we can use for the our asset manager Asset manager that acts as the base asset manager class for this game. This class is responsible for overriding functionality and storing. I guess I s yeah, there we go. And storing game specific types for game specific loading logic by setting asset in. So this is. We're actually going to set this in the editor, and I forget the path to do it. But we will find it whenever we set the asset manager. We have one more thing we gotta do. Gotta set these types. consumable item type call this a consumable consumable ha consumable and a weapon okay so i think that's it for our, our asset manager right now we have that set up item actor that set up. Okay, let's build this. Oh, slowly but surely we're getting there. Uh oh. What did it not like? Let's see. Oh, view sci fi item in where? In the asset manager? Why wouldn't you like in line thirty one? Mm. 
Okay. Now let's try. All right, sweet, cool. So let's open up here. Oh. Five percent, we're getting there. And okay, cool. So now we can go to our blueprints and we can type in. There we go. So, yeah, sci-fi item actor didn't show up until I made a blueprintable child class. So let's go ahead and do that. BP assault rifle. Open it up. Item mesh. Let's do the assault rifle. Type in weapon. Weapon actor. So BP pistol. Open it up. And the pistol. Okay, so now let's make a new folder. Call it data assets. And we can make a new data asset. Let's look for, yeah, sci-fi weapon, and then DA, and we'll call this assault rifle underscore common. And then we'll call this assault rifle a common assault rifle. It doesn't do much, but it gets the job done. And then we'll pick that. Oh, oh, right, because I have to delete that. Then we can right click, duplicate, and we can call this an uncommon. Common assault rifle. Had shown its value in battle numerous times. By the way, I'm just coming up with these descriptions completely on the fly <laughs> but I think you're starting to see what's awesome about data assets instead of making a whole bunch of blueprints 
I can just make these data assets which are super light and they are um, really easy to handle they automatically work with the asset manager and just using one uh, weapon actor the assault rifle I've already made two different types of rifles um, a common assault rifle and then an uncommon and then duplicates and I'll call this a rare a rare assault rifle this rifle has been used by professionals before and has earned its value uh, for its the consistency and raw damage output I don't know I'm just I'm just typing stuff guys I'm just typing stuff and then duplicate and we'll call this legendary and I'm going to call this old faithful I didn't even spell faithful right <laughs> old faithful a unique assault rifle that has that has only had that has only ever had one owner until he proved to until he lost his faith I don't know <laughs> until he lost his way this is the way there we go instead of legendary I'm going to call it unique instead of uncommon I guess I'll call this ra rate <laughs> rare well I guess I already have two rares legendary rare So we have four different types of rifles thanks to using data assets. And now I will do the same thing for the pistol.
Okay. Pistol. A rare pistol. Pistol has been is favored among assassin soldiers because it's awesome i <laughs> coming up with description coming up with descriptions on the fly is pretty hard um and then legendary So, pistol. No other pistol can rival this one. Except for another legendary pistol. <laughs> oh. And then got to come up with a unique name. For this pistol. Um, Leverer. And pistol that always delivers. 60% of the time, all the time. <laughs> oh, so many in your windows. So, pistol common, legendary, rare, and unique. Cool. So, we have already eight different weapons. And you're wondering, and we're just using two different actors, and you're wondering, well, how does this work? Well, because in each data asset, I can set uh, specifics for that particular weapon and um, make it different. I know that's the um, um, did I change? No, I didn't change the the item actors for any of these. No, oh, nope, I did for some. But not for all. Okay. But yeah, that's that's how easy it is. It, you just with the data assets, you um you go and make your items because these are the actual items. The only things these do are just visually represent the item within the world. These don't exist until these get loaded into the world and then we'll eventually create a spawn function where once these items are loaded and they're ready to be used we spawn the associated actor into the world so that's the idea but with just two weapon actors eight different weapons all right, so now we want to do our asset manager. Asset manager, there it is. So I need to go into engine, general settings, and advanced, I think. Engine, general settings, This all came from um, 
the menu pro pack, by the way. Where is it? Oh, default classes. Here we go. I'm going to change this to sci fi asset manager. All right, so let's see if I play, everything works, nothing crashes. So that's good. That's good. All right, so we got the bases of our items set up. Now the next step would be to load the items in the game. Um, I think the way that I'm going to handle that will be through, um, or the, the way that I want to load the player's inventory is when the game instance initializes. So... I think there's an init function that I can override. Yep. So let's open up Action RPG. Show you how it's done. Alright, so if you go into their game instance, you see a bunch of stuff. So in their init, initialize store items. This is also where the player's default uh, inventory is set. So have all of this so they have they they've created a struct where it takes in a primary asset ID and then an item count in an item level here they also set the slots for each item type or the number of slots for each item type so you could only have three weapons available equipped at a time you can only have one skill equipped you can only have one potion equipped so whenever I get to the inventory system I'm going to do something similar I want a primary weapon and a sidearm weapon uh, you can have two skills equipped at a time and then four consumables equipped at a time. So <clears throat> I think I will. They also do it by um, by an int. I might do that with an enum. I don't know yet, but that's what that's what they do. They that's how they configure stuff in their um, their inventory. So let's let's actually test something real quick. Sorry if that was loud. So weapons, one skill, one potion. So if we go to the game instance, and let's see if I change this to 2 and potions to 2. Compile, save, play, tab. can have 2 potions equipped. If 
fireball. In the UI, I can't, I can't change stuff, but, oh goodness, that's not what I want to do. That's okay. Um, so, going through this, they set the store items, so all the items that you create in the items folder here this is where the store gets populated by all those items see the store items array gets added or these items get added to the store items array set saving enabled so this is from the actual game instance in C++. So you get the save slots. You load, you asynchron asynchronously load the game. And then they handle it in code. Right, save game. Okay, so loaded save game. That's just the print stream. And that's and that's what they do. And that's kinda like what I want to do too. Is I wanna go to or what I wanna do is when we initialize the game instance, we're going to check to see if there is a saved game. If there's not, then we're going to give the character its default inventory. If there is a save game, then we're going to handle the save game. Now let's see what that looks like in code. Let's look at this here. Add default inventory. So let's look at blueprint callable yeah handle save game loaded so I think that is what is happening here set saving enabled so you can save async load the saved game and then handle save game loaded okay so handle save game loaded let's look at this handle the final setup required after loading a use save game object using async load game from slot returns true if it loaded false if it created one so if B saving is not enabled, then we're going to make if saving is that is disabled, ignore past in objects. Replace current save. Old object will garbage collect on its way out. So then, so then we get to save game, current, if current save game, then add default inventory. Hmm. 
yeah so here we see where the inventory the player's inventory gets added and then they broadcast the current save game so let's look at that default inventory if we want to remove extra clear out the existing inventory um, I think they type in false and then here they type in true so if the current save game is valid we're going to populate the inventory with whatever items are in the current saved game if it's not valid then there's no saved game and so we want to create a new one and then add in the default inventory so for each item inventory data dot reset okay so if there's not a valid save we're going to empty the inventory menu just in case so then add the default inventory this only adds if not already in the inventory which is handled by all the inventory stuff that we'll look at later what this is kind of what I what I want to do is when the player starts the game the game instance will populate that player's inventory with the items from their saved game um, if there is a saved that's where the items come from if there's not a save we will uh, create a default inventory that will be used to populate that inventory all right so I do think there is two more things we have to do before we can start doing all that let me go to project settings because I think one more thing I have to do is I have to link where the assets are right so primary asset type potion and I have to select that asset base class so that means I know I'm gonna have a consumable and I know I'm gonna have a skill weapon actor, sci-fi weapon. I don't think the skills will have an actor per se. But I don't know yet. The consumables will, the weapons will, and if there gets to a point to where there's armor involved, those will have their own own stuff. But I do know for a fact we'll have a consumable. So you can like do health take health packs stuff like that so let's at least do the item so sci-fi consumable get rid of my
Okay. So we have a sci-fi consumable. Let's call this sci-fi consumable actor. Okay, so let's close this. Okay, consumable. know something else I want to do and I'll probably do it before I end this stream so we're done with the asset manager we can close that done here we're done here let me go to um, sci-fi consumable put in the comment as the base consumable class a consumables data uh, eg effects of location when location when used Spell location wrong. Do that, do that. So that is taken care of. This is loaded. That's probably what I'm going to do because we're not always going to load these asynchronously same thing for the weapon okay um i will also want to handle the Note for the consumable actor, which abstract type same thing here. Acts as the base consumable actor. Consumable within the world exposes use function to handle what happens when this consumable is used. <laughs> sure, that's all I got right now. So 
that's the item. Let me make sure everything is squared away. Okay. That's an actor. Mm. Some something else we have to do is go this F primary asset type this is super important because this is going to uh, decipher what type of item Ooh, that's in the yeah, yeah. super important because it's going to determine what type of item this item is so We got several things that we need to that we need to handle. Um, and in order for it to be used by the asset manager, we need this. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, where do I want this? think at the top because it's super important knowing what type of item this is and description cool Then item actor just has an item mesh that okay. Then weapon actor okay. Then weapon. Then here we have to set the type. So let's look at potion for example. They have a constructor for the potion item, and then they set it to potion item type. So that's what we're going to do. That means, do they reference the... They do reference the asset manager. So in item, we got to reference the asset manager to base slash sci-fi asset manager yep so now we can do this go public call to make a constructor Events default properties and we're going to say Item type equals. We're going to go use sci fi asset manager weapon item type. And that's what we want. It's not a use sci fi item, it is a use sci fi weapon. Okay, 
So we have that, and now we need to do the same thing for the consumable. Make sure that's squared away. Consumables properties. Consumables default properties. I want to say item type equals new sci fi asset manager. Well, if I can spell consumable item type. Okay. So that's it for that. So we have two different item types, consumable and weapon. And we set their types. Now we have to get this function. Get this items uh, saved type at turn the F primary asset ID representing this items type. All right, let's implement this function. what we want to do here is this and we're also going to probably do this too I can't remember if this is used for anything. I think it is. I just can't remember what for. I think whenever they do comparisons, I can't remember. Implement that. Uh, I'm going to return this. Okay. And so that is used by all of our item classes. One last thing I'm going to do in, co in code is I want to create an item rarity. My item rarity. I'm going to have ir underscore common. It, haha, <laughs> no, ir. So common IR rare. I guess it would be better to do uncommon 
right? Because it'd be common, uncommon, rare, unique. I guess that would be better. Because the unique weapons would be the legendary ones, right? IR, rare. <laughs> Keep typing rate. And then IR underscore unique. And then IR max. Cool. Now let's implement this enum in our item class. So I think I want to put this above the item actor. Let's see. This items rarity I hope I spelled that right nope makes me wonder if I spelled it right yeah I spelled it right in the enum okay so we're gonna go common a common item that Let's do this. An item that can be commonly found in the world. And has low stats. Uncommon. And an item that an item that requires some effort to obtain and has average stats rare an item that is hard to obtain and has the second best stats in the game. Unique. An item that can only be obtained via special let's see the uh, special conditions eg passing a or completing a quest and has the best stats cool I make this a u property edit defaults anywhere category I well, don't need multiple commas and then we'll call this e sci sci-fi item rarity item rarity boom All right, let's build this.
just started raining really hard here. Okay. Rain, rain, rain. Alright. Let's action RPG. Let's open up our project. It's raining really hard right now. <laughs> oh, what is this? Is this the video? Mm, what happened to it? people hmm. um, working on the world project has multiple larger areas so I think this is in regards to the video <laughs> and that was um, supposed to play yesterday yeah and it never did <laughs> which is a shame because I would like to learn more about the asset manager because one of the things they were going to talk about was uh, action RPG yeah an editor tool tour of how action RPG uses the asset manager so would have been nice it's okay um, Anyways, with that said, opening up our project, attempting to use Asset Manager to the best of our abilities, because we're oblivious, because Epic does not give us documentation. You want to talk about off-camera stuff, right? So people get upset when someone makes a tutorial series, and then he does stuff off-camera. Epic is like the master of that. They'll be like, hey, here's this nice sh shiny thing that I've made, like the game playability system or the asset manager. This is what we use in games like Paragon and Fortnite. Now, we're going to give you documentation 
just to start you off so you could get a good understanding of it. But by the way, the understanding that you'll get is very small and what we actually do for Fortnite or Paragon is pretty big. We, we take what little basics we give you and we expand upon them so much to the point to where we just have to make a video about it. <laughs> I don't know, I just think it's funny. Is it, is it not opening? Let's try again. This is so great. Cool. Okay. So we went and set it the asset manager in our project settings. Yep. Now we actually need to go and tell as asset manager where our items are. So let's make a new one. This is going to be called Weapon. And the base class for this is Sci Fi Weapon. And I think that's all we have to do besides specify directory yeah no crazy rules or anything okay always cook right and that the same thing for its potion skill yeah they have always cook okay cool And then directory. Here we're going to say items, weapons, data assets. Now I don't have any consumable skeletal meshes yet, so I'm not going to do that just yet. Um. But when I do, I'll, I'll add a second weapons folder. Okay, so let's check this. We should have item rarity common, yes. And then we have weapon. And that's what we want to see. So this, if I was to, actually, let's just go ahead and do that. Consumables. Okay. Consumables. And let's just do data assets. And just go ahead and make let's see sci fi consumable DA. Help back. We'll eventually get to this. 
um, and now I can go to project settings asset manager I can make another one this is going to be called consumable consumable directory items consumables data assets rules always cook and then you see how it's consumable and then I can change it consumable weapon because we added those types into the asset manager and the asset manager knows where to look them up oh. so let's go ahead and update the rarity on these So this is, this isn't legendary, this is unique, unique, oh, uncommon, and then rare. So I'm going to have to change that comment. So we have uncommon. And then unique. And I'm going to use this enum to... Well, I know for a fact, for one thing, I'm going to use it so then I can change the background. That's going to show behind the weapon. So it will be like gray for common green for uncommon, blue for rare, and then orange for legendary or unique. So a unique pistol. Oh, I never named this unique pistol. Um, no, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. A rare pistol. Okay, and make this rare. So, common assault rifle, a rare. Keep typing rate. common a unique a rare and uncommon a uncommon and uncommon a unique common a rare This is uncommon. And then unique deliver. Okay, so that's our weapons for now. We have our asset manager set up. We have um, the items set up. So now the next step and something I'll work on, or something we'll work on in the next stream, is actually using the asset manager to load the items during the game instance. So that's what we'll do for the next stream. Um, so I'm going to end it here. Um, I hope you enjoyed spending time with me as I work on uh, putting this uh, project together 
if you enjoy the content make sure you like subscribe join the discord the link is down below uh, feel free to join the discord share your thoughts opinions feedback on the stream if you're following along with this share with us what uh, what you've been doing with it especially with the menu system now that that's at the point to where you can fiddle with it and make it look however you want um, share what you've been working on with uh, everyone build up this community alright guys that's it for this stream and I will see you guys later